Oh, nothing. I'm just uh, getting a view of all this out here. Waiting for people to find it. Nice. Uh, you know how to flip it around? Well, that's the thing. And you went live already? Uh, I got three people in here. Mm -mm. Hang on here. Ah! <laughs> it's not doing it good. Hey, y'all, what's going on? What's happening? What's up, y'all? What's going on? Thought I'd show you. Oh, Lord. Technical difficulties. Good day, y'all. Just wanted to show y'all my view. And somebody said, are you ready to see some progress? And I said this. I'm out here in the Caribbean getting ready for progress. I got some meeting with some bank folks down here about how to defer taxes legally. If you know about the Noble Institution, you know I'm all about trying to save people a buck or two. Yes, the hotel is dope. You can see pool action down there. Got some people in the short, shallow part. You know, we just doing it. We just doing our thing. Ah, sorry about that. What time is it here? It is seven o'clock right here, right now. Now, for argument's sake, I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna do this news, but I'm gonna have Miss April uh, record me while I do it. Cause you gotta hold it. Okay. okay. So you can turn, I'm gonna turn it to you, but you can turn on me, okay? I don't know what I'm okay, so turn this around on me. Oh, okay. And just hold it right there. Okay. Okay, so are we excited? Hi, Miss Mary. Yes, we are super excited. I told everybody there was a dream of mine a long time ago that I was going to be doing something in the Caribbean. We were going to be doing something with some central bank folks that I've been talking to for a couple of years now about, you know, uh, what happens when you come into a large windfall of money? How do you go through tax deferreds? Well, there are places down here in the Caribbean, especially the place I am right now, that there are physical laws written into their constitution that, you know, if you come up on cryptos, if you come up on dinar, if you come up on anything and you don't want to pay little to no tax, you can do it. And I'm just one of the few people that are out there trying to physically make it happen. So when people ask me, hey, what are you doing trying to make things better for your people? This is what I'm out here doing. As well as I gotta be out here with my beautiful wife. Is the camera on me or is it off to the side? It's on you. Okay. Oh, here, you want me to move it like no, no, this? No, no, that's fine, that's fine. I mean, if it's easier to hold it like that because it gives you a brace, that's easier. Yeah. So, everybody's asking about Iraq. Are we making progress? What's going on? How are things working? What What's happening with this that's going to change my life for the good? So I wanna read you a couple articles. This isn't gonna take very long. I wanna read you a couple articles. And then I'm going to say, you know, what do you guys think? I'm going to tell you what I think. And then we're going to go forward, okay? So, Iraq is witnessing a severe financial crisis that began with the outbreak of the virus last year and declining global demand for oil, which represents nearly 91% of Iraq's financial imports. With the continuation of the fiscal crisis and the failure to pay the salaries of employees last year, the government restored to what was called Iraq's government reform paper, the white paper. Remember... The white paper are the reforms. So when we hear all this stuff about, oh, the reforms, oh, the reforms, these are what you wanted to see because these are the things that are gonna take you from point A to point B, okay? With the rise of oil prices globally, the Iraqi government has been thinking about long-term fiscal strategies that may protect the country from falling into financial crisis that may be more uh, influential. One of the strategies put forward by the economic advisor Mohar Mahad Salih was representing the deletion of the Three Zeros project. He said, without specifying a date for the implementation of this step, in every economic equation, the ratio of profit is the profits and losses calculated. 
which is indicated by the economist Haman Ashamana that this ratio will not be equal presented in this equation, warning of the psychological disturbances that may take place in the marketplace after deleting the zeros. The reason why they say that is because you've had big ebbs and flows. They added value to their currency and then they dropped their currency. So they're gonna drop their currency. So as that currency is gonna to start to come down, in the marketplace, it's going to look different to the shoppers. You know, there's going to be a little fraud going on. People might be on the old system trying to work to the new system. But I'm saying all this because just think about this from this, this pragmatic point of view. If you took the dinar, and what if this new legislative body that comes inside of Iraq outlaws dollars? Physically outlaws dollars. And I've thought about this, and this wouldn't be something totally um, crazy to do. If the outlaws dollars besides institutional buying, meaning that just the option system and no dollars were allowed in the marketplace, punishable by law, then you would take an MCP practice that's been going on for years and forcing the dinar back to its point of excellence and forcing the country to use it on a day-to-day -day basis and forcing them to get inside of the ball game. Now, in contrast, losing the, par the losing party believes that the government may derive benefits from deleting the three zeros, which is that the government and the central bank will face fewer problems in the accounting system and financial account with limited zeros and small accounting numbers. Remember, if something right now basically, if it's represented by a thousand dollars, it really is a hundred thousand. If something's a million, it's really almost a, another three zeros behind that. So that's what, a, a 10 million. So it's much easier if you could lop off those three zeros, keep the accounting much cleaner and not carrying it so many points. There's actually been economic study out there that has shown the more times you have to carry the zero over, the more opportunity you are to act to make a mistake with an accounting procedure. And we already know Iraq's not totally using a totally sophisticated bookkeeping system, so imagine trying to do all these things by hand. Very difficult to happen. Financial advisor the Prime Minister set two conditions for deleting the zeros from the currency while stressing that the option to delete is proposed as part of a, of a point of strategies for reforming the currency and cash payment system inside of Iraq. See, there's no quasi-normal finance system that needs to come in place. There's no quantum physics involved. It's basic, simple, human error, normalcy accounting that Iraq wants inside of, what? Read a call, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, inside of the country. So just keep that in mind. Now. The Central Bank of Iraq developed a project to delete the zeros from the currency in order to reform the cash payment system, which has become burdened with insomnia of the economic blockade imposed in the 90s and of the last century. And to put it into research and study long ago after looking at about 54 international experiences from the end of Second War until the second decade of the 21st second century, which took place in various countries around the world, in which the monetary payment systems were reformed and made to work more effectively the last of which was the Islamic Republic of Iran and before that Turkey. Turkey has had a revaluation of their currency, whether it went up or down, and so has Iran to that certain extent, but everybody's using those as examples that not only is it possible, it's totally probable and it's happened before. So there is precedent set. The next article I want to tell you guys about, oh yeah, and you want my opinion about that? Isn't it just so ironic that after all these weeks of no news about deletion of the three zeros, now you have a plethora, it came out almost two to three times this week, of an article like this or some some like it. So don't think of it as, oh, well, this is just lucky, da, 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 never going to happen. No, they are actually in phases right now because here's the next reason why I think. The phenomenon of increasing zeros in the monetary system or deleting it to a single monetary unit usually comes due to exposure of economic economies to unruly waves of inflation. Do we already know that Iraq doesn't suffer from major waves of inflation? So that's a boom right there. Now, wars, siege and conflicts, which lead to financing the deficit, government budgets through cash insurances. And because the price means the value of goods and service expressed in cash, the continuation rise in prices without stopping leads to the erosion of the value of the monetary system as a whole, which requires the insurers of large monetary categories due to the lack of value of the small monetary categories. So what are they saying? If the smallest category that you have is 5,000, how much smaller can you really have? Because they haven't been introduced yet. See, they tell you things, and there's no two steps forward, three steps back. See, they tell you these things because they want you to know what they're doing. They want you to know that they know 
that there has to be a major surge. And it's not just because they're joining the WTO. Look at Vietnam. Vietnam's a member of the WTO, and they have the most worthless international currency on the market. So a justification for having uh, a, a currency and being in the WTO, it's awesome, yes. Would you have to be internationally recognized? Yes. Would you have to be economically um, sovereign? Yes. But it doesn't mean you have to have increase in values. And again, the example there is Vietnam, and not saying anything bad about Vietnam, but we're still waiting for them to clean up a little bit also. According to the monetary value of things, tangible assets and other inflates, and when inflation ends, according to which price has increased to three decimal places or more or less, according to the nature of each economy, countries resort to re reducing the artificial reproduction in numbers, especially in numbers of account books, books and various numbers of tools. Accountability after two conditions are met. First condition is price stability and global economic growth. And the second is an appropriate stability in political life. So the importance of the zeros, the importance of the deletings of the zeros from the currency and, and slimming the currency use as necessary condition for reducing accounting numbers and facilitating arithmetic. Don't you think that they don't know that being these new Iraqis out there? These new Iraqis, these young new Iraqis that are gonna come into this parliament, what they're gonna do is they're gonna change this banking system. A lot of things hinge around what happens in October, whether people like it or not. It really does, because think about this. Cash comes because of, this, this, because of its role of sustainability of calculating huge numbers of financial values that are not absorbed by ordinary computers due to large numbers of decimal places. what we just say? The more zeros you add out there, the, the easier it is to make an accounting mistake, and it's noted in the article which means that one number in front of it has 12 decimal places. That is way too much value for any one currency, and Iraq sees it, and they're trying to make progress to get you to where you're not seeing that. That is huge. Now, they go on to talk about the hyperinflation that happened in the 90s. Well, remember, the 90s were 20 plus years ago, you know, 30 plus years ago, if you go back all the way to the beginning. You don't have hyperinflation going on, so we don't have the same tangible problems that we had from the 90s and that's another reason why i've seen great progress that's why i tell people to look at the gdd having to look at people's inflationary metrics will also give you a, a sound mind and soul of what the economic heartbeat of the country is and iraq doesn't suffer from a great deal of hyperinflation so again are we making progress i think we're making greater progress than what people really give it credit to be or know what it to be Monetary systems aspire to remove the burden of historical inf inflation from the folds of the monetary unit by resorting to deleting the zeros from the old currency in order to equalize the new currency with lower numbers but the same value. So when people out there tell you about a lot, that's why you know it's not a lot. I'll read that for you one more time, kids. These are massive bombs. In this way, monetary systems aspire to remove the burden of historical inflation from the folds of the monetary unit by resorting to deleting the zeros from the old currency in order to equalize the new currency with lower numbers but the same value. A thousand becomes a dollar, five thousand becomes five, ten thousand becomes a ten. But holding the same value, that's not a lot. A lot would be you cut it off and you start all over. If that doesn't give you a reason to sing and dance in the rain, kids, I don't know what will. In this way, Mont okay, we read that, statistics. He concluded by saying the project to zeros is, is an Iraq technically prepared by the central bank, which is the official sector authority and the monetary authority concerned with the matter and in cooperation with all three strategies and authorities. But the project is postponed at the present time until the appropriate conditions are achieved and remains part of the currency system reform strategy and cash payments in Iraq. I.e., I'm telling you, I really feel like the, the 7th of October to the 10th is going to be big days. And from then all the way through the new year are going to be massive days, massive. Okay. Uh, now this one's another bomb. Um, financial advisor to the uh, to Ms. Uh, Al Kazimi announced that the remaining compensation for the Iraq's invasion of Kuwait is about 1.7. The initial figure was 52.5 billion, and they hope to be able to finish paying what was owed by the end of 2021. Now a lot of people are going to say, "Oh, that's not next week." Yeah, but now you know that they're going to have them paid before 2021. Now you also know that they're looking at trying to delete the zeros. Now you're also looking at them also trying to stay in fact and say, hey, look, guess what? We've got a whole new governing body of young new Iraqis that want to see their currency return back to the days of old. Don't you just find the timing kind of interesting? I mean, just a little interesting. Babe, just pan out and show them that.
That's why I'm down here in the Caribbean talking to central bankers. Because I believe this, as you should believe it also, that something is a rise. The target payment time is subjected to certain factors, such as the price per barrel of oil, as the Prime Minister's financial advisor noted that they expected all the remaining of the compensation completed within this year or more, depending on the evolution of oil prices or earnings of barrel per oil. Remember, we talked about this. I know it sucks when you put gas in your gas tank right now, but having high oil prices to pay off Kuwait, and we talked about this last year, those funds is crucial to us getting to the home run. So the United Nations Compensation Commission was created in 1991. At that time, they charged Kuwait with $52.5 billion for the invasion of Kuwait. They've received, um, the money has gone to Kuwaiti individuals, companies, government agencies, and other organizations that were victim of Iraqi invasion. The money that Iraq has been paying since then comes from a tax on sales of Iraqi oil and oil products. It is also worth noting that these payments had to be suspended between t four years, between 2014 and 18, due to security crisis in the country that controlled the terrorist organization ISIS had over the large political party. Kuwait war, which Iraq is now forced to compensate, involved the country um, in the early 90s. The state was then led by Saddam Hussein, claimed $2 billion from Kuwaitis for allegedly stealing oil through the bombing of Somalia oil field in southern Iraq. Kuwait rejected all accusations leading to increased tensions that lead to the invasion of the Iraqi troops. The invasion of Iraq forced Kuwait's Emir Ahmed al Sabah to flee to Saudi Arabia. Meanwhile, Baghdad announces the fall of the dictatorial regime. Complicit in a U.S. Zionist plot, which according to Iraqis, was aimed at preventing their country's economic recovery. Paying off Kuwait by the end of this year. Can I get a hell yeah? Can I just get a, a hell yeah? Can I get a shout of applause? Can I get someone to raise their hands and sing and, sh and sing and shout for a minute? You got some bombs. Oh, I love bombs. Give me all the bombs. Spam the chat with bombs if you think you're hearing some good news today. Not if you think you're hearing some good news. If you deducted that the news that you were given gives you a reason to give it a bomb, do it if you like. Permanent res um, representation of Iraq the United Nations discussed overcoming obstacles to this country's ascension to the World Trade Organization. Now, here's an interesting point. Uh, Iraq's being ascended to the WTO and quicker than people thought. The actual m paperwork is in Iraq's hands right now. All they have to do is basically sign and complete it. I can't find any real reason besides the 19 last year why this wasn't done, especially since both parties have come to a conciliatory recommendation that they put forth to the WTO and they are in agreement that it will be done and concluded. Man, thank you, thank you, thank you. How long did we go here? You're good. You can Okay, y'all, I'm going to wrap this up. Sorry, I got these meetings early in the morning tomorrow. Uh, I'll let you guys know how they go. Are you, are, is Iraq making progress? Yes, Iraq's making progress. Is Iraq slow and moving? Yes, Iraq's slow and moving. But I want, want you guys to know there's a lot of awesome things that are going to be happening. And I'm telling you, I'm not giving you a date. I'm just saying, isn't it peculiar that the dates all seem to center around this new regime that's coming to Iraq in October 7th? Y'all have a blessed night. Have a blessed evening. We're going to go do some things, and I'm going to holler at you next week.